Hi, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create this business poster or it, you can change it and customize it for any kind of poster in Canva. So I'm just going to move this to one side and here is my Canva home page and I need to open a new document. So go up to create a design and you can type anything you like in the top here. I've actually got poster portrait here, but if you can't see it, you can always type it in and you can see it will appear at the top here. I'm just going to select that and you just have a plain design. Now you can go and search for a template if you want to, just remembering that obviously if it has a crown, it's the pro version. I have the free version, so everything I'm going to show you today is for free. I don't have any of the pro assets at all. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my images. And the reason for this is because part of the cohesive design, I'm just going to show you the design again, part of the cohesive design is actually picking colors from your images. Now you may have a choice of images, you may not, but this is a really good demonstration of how you can make this cohesive from the colors in your images. So first let's go down to Pexels. Now if you don't have Pexels, you need to go and find it in apps. So click on apps here. Then you can just go to the top here and click on Pexels and press enter. And you can see Pexels at the top here. You can just click on it and then just press open. And here you have a wide variety of pictures that are all come free as part of the Canva package. So go up to the top here and you can search for any image you want. So I just looked at business conference, press enter. And you go down here and select from any of the images. I'm going to select this one at the top here. Just click on it and it will go into your design. Now I'm going to select some random people for a portrait, but obviously you will have the particular guest speakers or whoever you want on the front of your poster. So I'm just going to put in headshots and you can select from any of these images here. I'm going to select this one. I know I selected another one from my other post, but I can't find that at the moment, so it doesn't matter. We'll just select this one. And now I'm going to show you how you can import your own images. So go to, so go to uploads and you go to upload files, select from any of your files. Let's say this one here and then just click upload. I've already uploaded it. So you can see it appears here in my uploads and to use it, I just click on it. And again, you'll see that will go into my design. Now, the next thing to do is to crop all of these into the circles and squares. So if you go to elements, we want to select frames. Now frames are like a holding frame for an image that you can select and the image will be cropped to that particular shape. So let's select the circle, just click on it. If you can't see it on frames, just click see all and then you can scroll down to see all the different frame designs that you can choose from. Because of course you don't have to have a circle. You can have any design you like. So what you need to do is to move it around and eventually it will click inside this circle. Now you can see her head is a little bit too close to the top of that circle. So if I double click, you can see now we can see the circle and the image and we can just move that image down to where we want it and just press enter. So now we're just going to make this a little bit smaller and move it out of the way. We're going to do the same with this. Let's just move this down to the bottom. Now this one's a bit more difficult because we're actually going to put this into two and I'll just show you the example. You can see we're going to put this image into two squares. Now there may be an easy way to do this. I haven't found it yet, but I'm going to show you how I did it. So I'm going to duplicate this image. And if you select it, go to duplicate and you'll have two of these images. Then I'm going to go back over to my frames and click on this diamond shape. And then I'm going to once again move this shape over and it will click into that diamond shape. Click on another diamond and grab this image until it fits over that diamond as well. Now I know they're the same image, but bear with me. I'm going to double click inside and I'm now going to make this image quite big and then select the area that I might want for that image and press enter and double click in this one again, make the image big. And once again, try to get, you can see the image below here. So you can see the sort of portion of the image we want to allow it to follow through into the next image and make sense and press enter. It doesn't need to be that accurate. It's entirely up to you. 
So I'm just going to pop these images together. They are quite difficult to line up because unfortunately the diamonds don't line up as if we had squares. So if I move these together like this, you can see the pink guidelines appear. And so when they are perfectly lined up, you have this pink guide in the middle. Unfortunately, with these, it's not quite so easy because they're looking for items directly below or to the side of them, not to the angle here. So you do have to do this by eye, which is absolutely fine. Then I'm going to click and drag across the two images and put them into a group by selecting this group icon here. And now we can just move them anywhere and they still line up. The next thing I'm going to do is go back up to here. I'm just going to clear this search engine here or this search bar here. Then I'm going to go down to shapes. If you can't see shapes, you can search for it or you can go along the top here until shapes appear. And then I'm simply going to click on the square. And as you can see, a square is entered into your design. And for this one, I'm just going to turn it round and pop it up here. Now to make sure it's exactly the same width, you can actually click on one of these squares, go to position, and down here you can see exactly how wide that image is. Now, if you're perfectly happy with how big these images are, great. If not, you can make them bigger or smaller. What I might do is just click on this dotted line so I select the whole group and just make them just a tiny bit smaller, otherwise they're just gonna take up all the space on my design. So now I've done that, I'm just gonna click on one of these squares and you can go ahead and see the width of it is 26.95. So I'm gonna go up to my square and I'm gonna select width 26.95 and press enter. And that's now the same height as these as well. Now I'm gonna come back to the colors in a minute but first, I'm just going to make lots of duplicates. So select this item here, press duplicate, and I'm going to press duplicate five times, four times, and I'm going to move one here, just roughly, I'm not being too accurate with it, here, here, and here. So now I can begin to move my designs around so that they make sense. So now we've got all of those in place, we can have a look at the colour scheme you want to choose. Now it could be your logos, etc. But sometimes it's best to keep with the cohesion of these colours of this image. So if I click on this shape here and I go up to the colour icon here and click, over on the left here we've got photo colours. And it's very simply using all of the colours in the photos or very obvious colours in the photos and giving you that selection. So if you use any of the colors from here, it will tie in with the images you've used. So for this one here, I'm going to use this dark color here, and I'm gonna use that for this one here as well, and use that dark color there. And then for these, I'm going to use this slightly pinky color across there. So now I'm just going to move these photos over. Now you can see this photo has gone behind my graphics, so just select it, go to position, and over here just select to front, and it will pull the image forward. So I'm roughly going to put them here, but this is not its final position. So for this one at the top here, I've got to judge if I think this is the right size. And if it is, I'm gonna take a note, or I can copy it, select it, Command or Control C to copy it, click on this one, and then make sure this is locked, so the ratio is locked here. I've just clicked on that, so it will make it a complete square. And then select it, Command and Control V to paste that number in. Press Enter, and obviously now these two are identical sizes. So let's just go ahead and put a borderline around it. Select Border Style. We're going to take that up to 9 by sliding it across. Here is the colour, and we're going to select this dark blue again. Do the same with this one, take that up to nine, color, dark blue. And now we're gonna put a few graphics in. So we're gonna to go to elements. So go to the top here and type in dots and press enter. Go to graphics and click see all. And then you can choose from any of these dots. This is just to give it a little bit of interest. Select it, 
Then we can move one down to the bottom here and I'm just going to copy it and move one up here. And I'm going to change the colour of that top one to white. We can reduce the size of it. Again, all this very much personal choice, but I'm just showing you how you can go about using all of these different elements. Then we're going to search for some arrows. So again, go to elements, go to graphics, click see all, and then you can type in arrows. And again, you can go along and select any arrows you like from all of the, these displays. I'm going to select this one here. And I'm just going to rotate it using the rotate button, make it a little smaller. Then I'm going to copy it and move it across here, go to the color and select the dark blue again. I'm just going to reduce the size of that and maybe just rotate it a little bit. It doesn't seem to add up. Per and then at the bottom here, we can just reduce the size. If we don't want it coming over the top of this graphic here, go to position and select go to back. And you can see it's gone behind here. So that's the vast majority of this done now. We've just got to put in the text. So go to text. We're going to add a heading and we're going to select from the fonts and we're going to go down to this one here that says Anton and we're going to type in business conference but I'm going to type it in two different boxes and I'll show you why so I'm just going to move this one whoops I'm just going to move this one then I'm going to copy it so select duplicate the reason being is because if I copy it I can make the distance between the words as small or as big as I want Whereas if you use one box and just use a return key, it dictates how far away this bottom word is from the top word. It just gives you a bit more flexibility. Now I'm going to change the colour of this one to the dark blue. Now if you see it hasn't changed, just deselect it, reselect it, go to colour and check on the blue and it will change. Sometimes you just have to deselect things and reselect them for them to work. Make sure they're perfectly lined up here, you're happy with the space. Then just click and drag across both of them and select group and now you can move them exactly where you want them. Again go back up to subheading and here we're going to put the date in of the conference and I'm just going to reduce the size of this by using the decrease font size tool and just move that down. I'm going to put a box around that so go to elements Go to the back arrow, you don't want to be on graphics, I want to be on shape. So I want to use this shape here, so just click on it. And I'm just going to move it down, change the shape of it. Then click and drag across both of those elements. Go to position and then make sure it's aligned to the middle here and the centre here. And then click group. And now that's all one group and could be perfectly lined up with the edge here. Go back to text and then I'm going to add a subheading. I'm going to select this and take this down to 30 and press enter. Move it up to here. Change the color here to white. And then I'm going to duplicate it and bring one down to here. Then I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to enter in the name of my guest speaker. Then I'm going to select it. I'm going to change the font size to 40. Press enter. Move that to there and then duplicate it. Don't worry, I know it's not all lined up and it looks a bit odd at the moment. And then pull this down here. Double click inside. And then what I am going to do is I'm just going to line up these three. So click on speaker, move that. And you can see by all the pink lines that appear when it's fully lined up. And then you can click on one, hold down your shift key, click on the other elements. You can see I've selected those three and click group. If I was to click and drag across the whole lot, it would also include this graphic behind it, this one here. And I don't want to do that because I want to move this independently. 
Again, I'm going to do the same here. Check that you're happy with the spacing between the photo and the writing. And then when I move this one, you can see it begins to line up with the one below. But you can see the names are going across the graphics and that doesn't quite work. So what we can do is we can adjust the graphic behind it. So click on it and then we can move it. Next, we can go up and add another subheading. And then we can put in our text. Now you can clearly see what's happened here is we've got all the words everywhere and they're all centered. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure they're all aligned to the right. So go up to this icon here and click on it until they're all aligned to the right. You can scroll through, they can line to the middle, the left or right. So just scroll through to your happy. Now I'm going to change the font size. I'm going to go down to 30, press enter. And I'm also going to take the bold off because I don't want the bold on. And you can see it doesn't quite fit into the area. And that's because I've used the return keys a few times. So what you need to do here is you need to, because it all types in one line, you need to figure out how your words are going to fit in the space. So for example, I want these two words to fit in here. Any more words and it's going to start to go over the page. So I'm going to put my cursor here, press the return key. Now there's a bit more space here. I'm going to put my cursor before the and and press delete so that it goes back up to the other line. Now I need my text to be cut here. So I'm going to press the return key. And then here I'm going to press the delete key and send it back up and put a space bar. And then here I'm going to press the return key so that it all lines up beautifully or I can move this to line up with the text below. It's completely up to you. If the text is still too big, you can select it and go to this icon here, decrease font size, and then you can zoom out using the zoom tool at the bottom. If you're happy with that, we're just going to copy and paste this or duplicate one and move it down to the bottom here. And this is where we're going to put some different text and we're going to use some bullet points. So I'm going to select the bullet point here. Let's just delete this text. Now we've got bullet point. Now the great thing about text is if it doesn't look quite right, it's too big or too small, you can actually change the font size by pulling out the corner dots of that particular text box. And then we're just going to move it so once again it lines up with the edge. It's a bit more difficult with bullet points because if I line it up to the edge you can see the bullet points aligned inwards a little bit and not with the edge here. So you can use your eye just to move those bullet points over a bit so they do line up. Now once you're finished just make sure you're happy with all of the alignment because often you get to the end and you're too busy looking at other things and you forget something doesn't line up or it doesn't look quite right or it's off center. So make sure you just go ahead and check all of that before you decide to download it. Perfect. So once you're happy with your design, you need to go to share. Then you need to go to download. And here you have the options of a variety of different files from PNGs, PDFs or JPEGs, so on and so forth. So I'm just going to have the selected PNG file and then you can select the size. But obviously, if you decide to go up, often you will be told you need to buy the pro version. So I'm just going to select download. And as you can see, it's now downloading to my downloads. Then if I go to my downloads, you can see the file at the top here. Just double click. And here is my image. And then I can go ahead and use this to send to a printers, put on my website, send as a newsletter. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.